NEO ET7 prototypes spotted testing in Poland. NEO is perhaps the most effective known of the three leading Chinese startups, the others being Xping and Liado. Up to now, NEO has only produced SUVs and is well known for its battery swapping. The brand launched in Norway last year and at the 2021 NEO Day announced plans to get on sale in 25 markets by the top of 2025. While NEO launched in Norway with the prevailing ES8 model, all new markets will only get the second generation models. Leading that push is the ET7, the primary of three cars to travel on sale this year on the new platform. There have been two photos of camouflage ET7 from Poland, but the catch is that Poland has not been mentioned as the initial launch market for NEO flagships. So why is it there? How good is NEO ET7 and should you look forward to buying it or not? Hello everyone and welcome back to Tech Zen. Today we are going to talk about the NEO flagship electric vehicle ET7. Are you ready to know? Without delaying any further, let's get started. But before that, please hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any new updates from our channel. The NEO ET7 prototypes were usually seen in Germany, which very likely will get the model first. The primary shipments with a complete three-digit number of ET7 are already headed to Europe. Besides Germany, sales are expected to begin this year also in Norway, the Netherlands, Denmark, and Sweden. In Norway, NEO already offers the older ES8 model, but on a limited scale. For the official data, about 800 units were registered since July 2021. The sales volume of the NEO ET7 may be higher, just because it will be available in an exceedingly higher number of markets. In parallel to the launch of the ET7, NEO is additionally preparing to expand its battery swap station network, including the assembly of the stations in Hungary. The interesting fact, the first of the three cars to go on sale this year is on the new platform. What's the massive deal about the new platform? Firstly, it's not almost dynamic improvements, it's allowing for far better driving assistance capabilities than the primary generation. The ET7 is the first NEO car to feature LiDAR. Xping generally contains a better reputation when it involves driving assistance, but interestingly, it was able to undertake lane changes on the highway by itself. The ET7, using LiDAR, will take this to the next level. Unfortunately, like Chinese cars on launch, these features aren't yet operational, so testing them will have to watch over again. Now let's talk about the exterior of this car. Unlike the Weltmeister M7, which has wart-like protrusions everywhere, NEO has done a superb job integrating the sensors. The foremost prominent is simply above the windscreen, which houses the LiDAR sensor flanked on either side by 8 megapixel high-resolution cameras in what NEO refers to as the Watchtower sensor layout. The ET7 contains a remarkably slippery 0.208 coefficient of drag despite these slight bumps. And if there's one word that best sums up the outside design, it's sleek. But it's not nearly aerodynamics. The finished result's a genuinely good looking car. Looking at pictures, it's easy to think that the inside of the ET7 is simply like every other Neo. Indeed, the setup is extremely familiar, albeit more minimalistic. However, the materials and overall quality are an enormous boost. That's not to say they're bad on older NEO models, but on my test day, I rode in an ES8, and you may certainly feel the difference. On the ET7, the tactile experience raises the bar and is quite a match for the German trio. Rats and inserts find their first application on a production car. Not only are they more environmentally friendly because of being renewable, but they need a captivating textured feel. These cover huge swaths of the front and back, notably on the middle console, dashboard contrast, and electric window buttons. Consistent with NEO, they assign to 40% quite other brands and use it not just on the visible seat parts, but also on inserts and also the wheel, not to mention microfiber headlining, which adds up to a comfortable environment. There's no glove box on the ET7, but there's much space under the floating center console like other NEO cars. One unusual feature is the cubby hole on the middle console. This will act as security with access either by face recognition or inputting a code, and also instead of a more normal rear hinged opening, can be receptive to either side. Inside are two USB ports, including the sole blood type with the whole car, together with a 12 volt outlet. Thanks to the panoramic sunroof, the rear is extremely light and airy, and despite a reasonably raked roofline, headspace should be acceptable for well nigh the tallest passengers. NEO makes a giant deal of benchmarking the ET7 against the long wheelbase 5 series, and indeed legroom could be a good plus. Without a race center tunnel, the center passenger has softer seating. 
Rear passengers get an LCD panel mounted on the rear of the middle console to manage climate and seat functions. Underneath may be a Type-C USB outlet, and another is within the compartment of the fold-down armrest. Just like the front seats, outer passengers within the rear get heating, cooling, and massage functions. The ET7 doesn't have a trunk, but the boot space is generous, and also the hatch gets electric openings and shuttings. Now let's talk about the most important part of what we love, but before that, I'm going to please request of you, if you've not already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now we'll get back to the video. Performance and driving feel track driving gives the power to check the acceleration, braking, and handling. In Sport Plus mode, the quoted acceleration time is 3.8 seconds, but Neo's keen to illustrate that this can be supported by the car being half-loaded, and with just a driver, it should be faster still. With the stronger of the two electric motors at the rear, the ET7 noticeably pitches up when accelerating hard. Once at 100 km an hour, the car needs 33.5 meters to bring it to a standstill when the brakes are fully applied. This can be most appreciable when doing an elk test here. The car has often come to a halt before the zigzag maneuver is complete. There's little doubt that the ET7 is significant, but it's surprisingly nimble when doing a slalom and body roll because the air suspension isn't a difficulty. Currently, there are four drive modes additionally to Sport Plus, there being a Sport, Comfort, and Eco setting. There's also a custom choice to pick and blend the settings for acceleration, regenerative braking, ride height, suspension stiffness, steering weight, and air con. Custom allows you to drop the acceleration figure right down to 12.9 seconds, where the car becomes only front-wheel drive, which perhaps reveals the car's biggest problem. Unlike the Zeker 001 and the X-Ping P7, which have a rear-wheel drive bias in their all-wheel drive versions, the ET7 usually uses the front wheels for power, except under heavy acceleration when traction on all four wheels is required. Range depends on various factors like mode, but the 21-inch tires on our test car reduce the maximum range of the 100 kilowatt hour battery pack version from 705 kilometers to 615. There's also a 75 kilowatt hour pack available on launch. Later, within the year, a 150 kilowatt hour semi-solid state battery should be an option, giving a variety of over a thousand kilometers. One thing to be noted is that NEO is now using the new China-only CLTC standard, which is even more generous than NEDC for range. Thanks to the heads-up display and proper electrical device, situational awareness is sweet. Most things are controlled through the middle screen. The car tested was a pre-production model with earlier software than models set for delivery. As such, it failed to have an option for English, which is supposed to debut on the ET7. Nonetheless, the navigation and response times of the screen seem to be far better than with earlier NEO cars. It's also possible to manage many functions through voice via NEO's digital assistant, Nomi. That the ET7 was benchmarked against a 5 Series is telling. NEO intends to travel after German premium brands instead of just Tesla. Initial impressions show that the ET7 ticks the correct boxes for many metrics. And that's it for today's video, guys. We sincerely hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click on that like button and share it with your friends and family. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, too, to see even more of our incredible videos. And you can also check out other videos that have been specially selected for you. We'll catch up in the next one. Thanks for watching.